Buckle up, folks, because today we're diving into a story that's going to make you question everything you thought you knew about physics, time, and maybe even reality itself. We're talking about Rolando Polizza, an Italian inventor, and his claims to have built a machine capable of matter annihilation, transmutation, and get this, even time travel. If that wasn't wild enough, he claimed to have had help from a physicist who vanished decades earlier, Ettore Majorana. Our deep dive today is based on Polizza's own book and writings, so... Uh, let's see if his story holds up to scrutiny. It's definitely a captivating story, to say the least. <laughs> and uh, I guess you could say it all starts with the mysterious disappearance of Vittori Majorana, a brilliant physicist who vanished without a trace in 1938. Just imagine a world where a top scientist at the peak of his career just disappears, leaving behind nothing but theories and speculation. Some say he staged his own death. Others believe he went into hiding, maybe even joined a monastery. The mystery remains unsolved to this day. So we've got this famous physicist who goes missing. And then decades later, Polizza enters the picture claiming not only to have met him, but to have actually worked with him on this, well, this secret project. What are the chances? Oh, right. It's definitely a pretty wild claim. Polizza describes meeting this reclusive uh, professor at a convent in 1958. This professor, after almost a year of sharing his knowledge of physics with Polizza, finally reveals himself to be. Ettore Majorana. It's like something out of a movie. Wow. Polizza says Majorana tasked him with building a machine. A machine based on his advanced theories. He called it simply the machine and claimed it could harness the, the immense power of antimatter. Hold on. Antimatter. Isn't that the stuff that, you know, <laughs> explodes when it touches regular matter? Like total annihilation. That's exactly right. Antimatter is like matter's opposite twin. When they meet, they annihilate each other, releasing a huge amount of energy in the process. Way more powerful than any nuclear reaction. Think of it this way. A tiny amount of antimatter could theoretically power an entire city for a year. Wow. Okay, so we're talking like serious power here. Serious power. And Polizza claimed that this machine could not only control this annihilation process, but also rearrange matter Yeah. at its most basic level. Am I getting that right? You got it. So you're telling me this machine can potentially turn anything into anything else, like turning lead into gold, but on a whole other level. That's the idea. Polizza even claimed it could achieve what alchemists have dreamed of for centuries, turning one element into another. Transmutation. He describes early experiments, successes, challenges, often working with a trusted engineer named Fausto. They faced, you know, the typical problems, technical difficulties, constant financial strain, and doubts from collaborators. I can imagine. But Polizza also claims to have achieved some pretty amazing results, even with those limitations. So what kind of results are we talking about here? Well, think about it. Imagine a world where we could eliminate resource scarcity through matter transmutation. Okay, now that's where it gets really interesting. We're talking about a technology that could revolutionize everything from energy production to manufacturing to, well, you name it. Exactly. But if Polizza really had this game-changing invention, why didn't he just show it to the world? Well, according to Polizza, the situation was a lot more complicated than that. He describes a life of intrigue with Italian and U.S. government officials, mm. private investors, and even a shadowy group he called the Americans, all showing interest in his work. Wait, a shadowy group called the Americans? Thank you. Now this is sounding more like a spy thriller every minute. It's a wild ride, that's for sure. So were they trying to help him or stop him? Well, that's the million-dollar question, isn't it? Polizza's story is full of twists and turns. He claimed some were intrigued by the machine's potential, while others wanted to control it, maybe even weaponize it. And then there were those, like the Americans, who seemed to actively work against his interests. He talks about stolen prototypes, missing videotapes of experiments, even being arrested under suspicious circumstances. So we've got this incredible invention, powerful forces vying for control, and a lone inventor caught in the middle of it all. It's like a real-life superhero movie, mm. but with science instead of superpowers. It's definitely a story that captures the imagination. So what did Pellissa do to protect himself and his work? He went on the run. He was constantly moving, hiding his research, trying to stay one step ahead of those who wanted to steal his technology. It was a dangerous game. I can't even imagine. He was determined to prove that the machine worked, but he also wanted to make sure it didn't fall into the wrong hands. And that makes sense. But you have to wonder, how do you even begin to prove something like this? We're talking about stuff that sounds like science fiction. Right. Did he have any hard evidence? He claimed he did. In fact, he says he even conducted an experiment for Belgian officials attempting to demonstrate the machine's capabilities. But things fell apart. 
The experiment failed, and Pulitzer was left with more questions than answers. Wow, so even when he tries to go public, things get messy. This Pulitzer guy just can't seem to catch a break. It's one setback after another. So what happens next? Well, that's where another fascinating character enters the story. Professor Paolo, a skeptical but brilliant Swiss mathematician who becomes deeply involved in Polizzi's research. Okay, a mathematician. That's an interesting twist. Yeah, it definitely adds another layer to the story. So what did Professor Paolo bring to the table? Well, Professor Paolo was initially drawn to the project by the sheer amount of data generated by the machine, over 116,000 data points. He was skeptical, of course, but also intrigued by the complexity of it all. He thought maybe, just maybe, there was something real buried in all those numbers. So this data held the key to understanding the machine. What exactly was Professor Paolo looking for? As he started analyzing the data, Professor Paolo began to notice something fascinating. Intricate patterns that seemed to connect to advanced mathematical concepts, like chaos theory and Fibonacci sequences. Fibonacci sequences. Are those the patterns you find in things like seashells and sunflowers? Exactly. They're these naturally occurring mathematical sequences that suggest there's an underlying order to the universe. And what Professor Paolo was seeing suggested that Pulitzer might have tapped into that fundamental order with his machine. Okay, my mind is officially blown. We've gone from a mysterious machine to missing physicists to secret government agencies to mathematical patterns found in nature. Where does it go from here? You know those 12 chemical elements that kept showing up as residue in Pulitzer's matter annihilation experiments? Yeah. Professor Paolo was convinced they weren't random. He thought there was a deeper connection, maybe even a link to those patterns he was uncovering in the 116,000 data points. It's like he was starting to see the hidden language of the universe, and Pulitzer's machine was the translator. Okay, so we've got these weird elements, complex mathematical patterns, and a machine that seems to, like, bend the laws of physics. But how does all of this connect to the claims of time travel yeah. and rejuvenation. Those seem like, I don't know, a whole other level of crazy, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know what to mean. That's where Pulitzer's story gets really mind-bending. He doesn't give us a step-by-step -step guide to time travel or anything, but he hints that manipulating time might be tied to manipulating matter at the tiniest level, like the subatomic particles that make up everything. So you're saying, by rearranging those building blocks of matter, you could potentially rewind the aging process or even like jump through time. That's the idea. I can see why Professor Powell got hooked. It's a bold claim for sure. One that really pushes the limits of what we currently understand about physics. But remember, Majorana was a genius. He was working on cutting edge ideas before he vanished. Maybe he stumbled onto something truly revolutionary. Right. It makes you wonder if there's a whole world of scientific understanding that's hidden from us, mm. just waiting to be discovered. But okay. If Pulitzi could actually transmute matter and manipulate time, why didn't he use those powers for himself? I mean, he was always struggling financially. He could have solved all his problems in a heartbeat. Well, Pulitzi claims that Majorana instilled in him a deep sense of responsibility. He believed this technology should be used to benefit humanity, not for personal gain. I mean, that's admirable, but still. Think about it. If you had the power to create anything you wanted, wouldn't you feel a tremendous burden to use it wisely? Absolutely. But in Pulitzer's world, it seems like staying true to those principles came at a high price. Didn't he claim that the Americans offered him a deal? Like a chance to work with them and have access to unlimited resources? He did. He described meeting with them at the secret facility, where he saw his stolen machines being replicated. They even offered him a chance to join their project. But he refused. Wow. He felt they were driven by power and control not the betterment of humanity. He chose to stick to his ideals, even if it meant facing constant hardship. So he turns down a chance to work with unlimited resources and potentially change the world. It makes you wonder what those Americans really wanted, what they planned to do with Pulitzer's technology. This is getting pretty intense. Did they just let him walk away after he refused their offer? Not exactly. Pulitzer claimed they tried to pressure him, even threatened his family to force him to cooperate. He was constantly on the run, not only from those who wanted to steal his invention, but also from the legal troubles he was facing in Italy. He was accused of financial irregularities and even of building a weapon of war. A weapon of war. Mm. That's a far cry for matter transmutation and time travel. Uh. I guess any technology, no matter how advanced, can be twisted and used for destructive purposes. It's a reminder that even the most groundbreaking discoveries 
have a dark side. Exactly. And Pulitzer's story really highlights that duality, the yeah. potential for incredible progress, but also devastating consequences. So do you think Pulitzer ever doubted himself? If he ever questioned whether it was all worth it? I mean, right. he was facing constant threats, legal battles, and the possibility that his life's work could be used for something terrible. It would be understandable, wouldn't it? Yeah. Pulitzer doesn't talk much about his personal doubts, but he does describe how Professor Paolo became increasingly concerned for his safety, urging him to be cautious. They were both caught up in this web of intrigue, a world where the lines between reality and paranoia started to blur. So even the skeptical mathematician starts to believe that there are powerful forces working against them. That's pretty chilling. It is. Makes you wonder if there's any truth to Polizzo's claims of being watched, of cryptic messages and strange occurrences. It's like something out of a conspiracy thriller. Polizzo's story definitely takes you down a rabbit hole, with each twist and turn adding another layer of mystery. But even with all this drama unfolding, they were still working on deciphering those 116,000 data points, right? Mm. Did they ever manage to, like, crack the code to understand the true potential of the machine? Polizzo describes a pivotal moment in 1989 a moment of triumph that quickly turns to despair. He claims that under controlled conditions, with Professor Paolo as a witness, he achieved the impossible. He transmuted polystyrene into gold. Wait, he actually turned plastic into gold. That's incredible. But you said it was a moment of triumph that turned sour. What happened? The gold, the ultimate proof of his claims, was stolen shortly after the experiment. It was a devastating blow to Pulitzer. A victory snatched away just as he thought he'd finally achieve validation. Wow, so he's finally got proof that his machine works, and then it's stolen right out from under him. Talk about bad luck. It's almost too perfect, like something out of a movie. It's a wild story. You have to wonder, if those mysterious Americans were behind it, right? Did Pulitzer ever find out what happened to the gold? This is where things get even stranger. Pulitzer claims that he was contacted by representatives of the Americans, who confirmed they had possession of the stolen gold, and even admitted to replicating his machines at a secret facility. It was a chilling confirmation of his suspicions, a sign that he was caught in a game, far bigger and more dangerous than he ever imagined. Okay, so they steal his technology, can't quite figure it out on their own, mm -hmm. and then try to recruit him to help them unlock its full potential. That's pretty audacious. Yeah. But Pulitzer turned them down, right? Mm. What happened next? Did they just give up and leave him alone? Not quite. Pulitzer's story is far from over. Despite the pressure, the threats, and the setbacks, he continued to pursue his research, driven by an unshakable belief that this technology could ultimately change the world for the better. This Pulitzer guy is either incredibly brave or incredibly stubborn. Or maybe a bit of both. I'd say it's a combination of both. It sounds like he was truly dedicated to his vision, yeah. even in the face of overwhelming odds. He was. I mean, this whole story. It makes you think, doesn't it? It really does. His story raises some fascinating questions about the nature of truth, the limits of science, and the responsibility that comes with groundbreaking discoveries. Absolutely. Is Pulitzer a visionary genius, a skilled con man, mm. or something in between? Yeah. That's what makes his story so captivating. It's like a puzzle with missing pieces, a story that's full of intrigue and ambiguity. But you said his story isn't over. What happened next? Did he ever manage to escape those shadowy forces? Or did they eventually catch up with him? So it sounds like Pulitzer was trapped. You know, on one hand, he wanted to share his discovery. But on the other, he feared the consequences. What a dilemma. Yeah, he was walking a tightrope, for sure. Did he ever find a way to resolve that conflict? To bring his technology to light without compromising his principles? It's hard to say for sure. Polisa's narrative becomes more philosophical towards the end. He talks about a growing disillusionment, not with the technology itself, but with humanity's readiness to handle such a transformative power. So you mean he started to think that the world wasn't ready? It seems that way. He describes feeling like a guardian of a secret, too powerful to be revealed, at least for now. He hints at ongoing research, continued experimentation, but also a cautious approach. A sense of waiting for the right time. The right circumstances. Oh. So the mystery continues. This is one of those stories that leaves you with more questions than answers. Like, we've only scratched the surface. It's true. Pelissa's story isn't just about a machine. It's about the nature of scientific progress, the limits of our knowledge, and the ethical dilemmas we face when those limits are pushed. Well said. What about Professor Paolo? Did he stick with Pulitzer? Pulitzer doesn't say explicitly what became of their collaboration, but he does mention Paolo's growing concern for his safety 
and a shared understanding of the gravity of their situation. It suggests a bond forged in extraordinary circumstances. Yeah. Okay, before we wrap up, I have to ask about the machine itself. Did Pelissa ever reveal how it actually worked? Like, did he leave behind any blueprints or schematics? He didn't, at least not that we know of. His descriptions of the machine are often vague, almost poetic. He talks about harnessing the energy of antimatter, creating fields of resonance, and manipulating matter at the subatomic level. So, like, not exactly a user manual? Not quite. Maybe he did that on purpose yeah. to protect his invention? It's possible. Or maybe he simply wanted to emphasize the philosophical implications of his work. The potential for a future transformed by technology that seems almost magical. It's pretty maybe to think that somewhere out there, this machine might actually exist. Right. It's a testament to one man's vision and determination. It is. But it's also a bit unsettling to consider the potential consequences. I agree. It's a lot to think about. Police's story forces us to confront those uncomfortable questions to think critically about the relationship between science and society and the responsibility that comes with knowledge and discovery. It's a story that stays with you, full of intrigue, mystery, and a sense of wonder. If even a fraction of what Pulitzer claimed is true, well, it suggests a reality that's far stranger and more wondrous than we can currently imagine. I think that's a good way to put it. Well, folks, I think that brings us to the end of our deep dive. We've journeyed through a world of vanished physicists, revolutionary inventions, shadowy figures, and a lone inventor struggling to protect his creation and his ideals. It's been quite a ride. It has. Pulitzer's story leaves us with more questions than answers, but it also leaves us with a sense of awe and wonder at the possibilities that lie beyond the boundaries of our current understanding. I couldn't agree more. And who knows, maybe someday, the full truth about Ettore Majorana and the machine that could change the world will finally be revealed. That would be something. And until then, <laughs> we can only speculate, wonder, and keep exploring the edges of the unknown. Well said. Thanks for joining us on this incredible journey. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and keep diving deep.